Hello everybody, I made a video about the matchmaking in League of Legends and after reading your comments, I decided to make this short video to go a little bit deeper on the, on the topic. Uh, and to help me with that, I brought this time Josh Mank. Josh Mank is the mind behind the matchmaking and skill system at Riot Games. So it means that if you play League of Legends or Valorant or any other uh, Riot title, he's the guy behind their matchmaking and the systems should work very similar. But before we dive in, I want to make something very clear. This is not another conspiracy video about the matchmaking. All right. Uh, I have nothing against Riot whatsoever. Actually, it's completely the opposite. I absolutely love this game. I've been playing this game for over a decade. All right. I think it's 12 years now. Uh, and I have nothing against the company, nothing against the game, all right? And and to be fair, the the ranked system in League of Legends is 100% accurate. I truly believe that. And I made a lot of tests and I and I met a bunch of people and I believe that the ranked system in League of Legends is 100% correct. It's 100% accurate, all right? The matchmaking, yes, sometimes it can be a little bit disheartening. It can affect your, your mental state. This is, this is true, definitely, all right? And it's not, it's not just me. It's not just you. If, you. if you watch challenger players, if you watch streamers, if you watch pro players, all of them, you know, when they're on the loser skill, they are not happy, all right? So it can happen with everybody. Enough talk, let's start with the skill system. The skill system in League of Legends is way more important than the matchmaking itself. Because understanding how good the players are at the game is the backbone of the matchmaking system and the ranked system. So now let's watch Josh Mank talking about it. Again, like I said, is any method you want to use to measure player ability? And ideally, it's predictive. Ideally, this method you use to measure skill lets you, in the future, predict what's going to happen in your matches. And why do you care about a skill system? Maybe you're going to use it for matchmaking. Maybe you're going to use it for ranking. Or maybe you just want to understand your players and how skill is spreading out in your game. And maybe you want to understand how, depth, how deep your game is and how much skill depth it has. And that's something that being able to measure skill in your game can help you with. So let's talk about some, some skill systems. So there's simple stats you can use for skill. In like a shooter, there's kills per death, there's score, things like APM to kind of measure, get, some are better than others depending on your game. Uh, and, and they can actually help you figure out how good your players are. Uh, another type of rating system you might have heard of are, uh, or sorry, skill system or rating systems. And this is where we put a magical number on the player. And that's ideally predictive. That I can compare two players' magical numbers and come out with some guess about how they're gonna perform if they play against each other. So the skill system is basically a data collection. The goal of the skill system is to define your skill level in the game with precision. So Riot gathers a huge amount of data from your games, from CS, KDA, objectives, APM, as you, as you heard from him, vision score, and much more. And after that, they will compare your data against other players to determine your skill level. Okay, Josh, so what is a good skill system? So what is a good skill system then? I think it's one that finds player skills super fast, especially if you need it for matchmaking. To, if in your game it is important to have great matchmaking, then being able to separate the good players from the bad players fast is important because players aren't going to stay around too long if that's the case. And I also think it should predict match outcomes correctly. So if you give me two players, A and B, hopefully your skill system will tell you how often player A will beat player B. Now, here is where the matchmaking magic begins. If the skill system believes you should be climbing, the matchmaking will provide you with a higher percentage of matches where your team is stronger and the opponents are weaker. However, it's not just about wins. The system is designed to keep you engaged. That's how, that's how they make money. They want you to play more, not less. And of course, we need to remember that Riot is a company. It's not a charity, all right? So they want to make some money. And guess what? That's fine. That's, that's what, what they're supposed to do, all right? And let's be real. What do we want? You want a matchmaking that puts you in random matches with random people 
like they say, with roughly 50% of chance, chances of winning every single game. Yeah, but sometimes people have bad days. Sometimes people have good days. So the ranking would be just based on luck, right? Because if you are unlucky and have most of the time bad teammates or they're the same level, but they are playing poorly today, right? They're they are tilted or I don't know, they changed their mouse and the mouse sensitivity is different, right? And now they are playing poorly and your rank would be based on luck. I don't think you want that, right? I wouldn't. Yeah, but don't worry. It's not like that. That works, all right? The systems that Josh Mank designed for Riot have one goal in mind, which is first, determine with very, very, very accuracy your skill level. Second, figure out where you should be in the ranking. Third, use the matchmaking to place you there. Do you want to know how they do it? Josh Manks explained this as well. So we have a player, but we want to know how good that player is. So we put a number on them. That number should represent their skill. Now, we use the skill to compare players to other players. So given two players, we can then figure out the difference in their skill from each other. Now, a good skill system, if it's working right, the player with the higher skill should win most of the time. We also want to take this same concept to the team level. And one way, simple way to do that, for this talk at least, is just to take the average of each team. Take their average skill, the average of the numbers on both sides, and then take the gap between them. And I call this the team skill gap. And it helps us tell us which team is going to win most of the time. And before we move to matchmaking, how fast the skill system can determine a player's skill? And this is what I mean by super, super fast. So the state of the art that I've built recently has this type of comparison. This is from actual like real data simulations. And this is the difference. So the dotted line is this player's actual skill. And then what I have on the bottom there is how many games these players are playing. So this is supposed to show you how fast it takes the different methods to find out your skill. So if you just naively grab something like ELO, you're going to have a gap of about this type of situation where it's been 100 games and ELO still doesn't know how good this guy is, whereas a state-of-the-art system should get it within a few games. Okay, so now we know that with just a few games, the system can pinpoint your skill level. So let's see what he thinks about the ranking. So again, my personal philosophy, you guys will notice really quick, I'm kind of a purist, for better or for worse. Like when I work with game teams, I talk to them a lot about what their audience is, whether or not this is right for them. But my feeling is if you're going to go skill, go all the way. Because like the players who like skill-based systems, they're going to love it. And the ones that don't, like, they're not going to engage with it anyways. They're going to ignore it. So like you don't want to cater to them as much. So go all the way. It's nice if your skill system has a link to the pro players. If I can look at the skill system and see at least the pro or kind of top amateur players near the top are the same as the pros that are playing in the real tournaments and things like that, live ones, then I'm going to, be, I'm going to know as a player what I need to do to get up there. I'll have a good feeling for that. Uh, it's, yeah, sure, it's kind of fictional. Most people are, not, of course, not going to get there, but at least I can, you know, kids can tell their mom, hey, I can win a million dollars if I buy this game and play it enough. Um, and do you wonder how accurate is their prediction of which team going to win? And hopefully you get something like this, if it's a good rating system. And I'll tell you that this is possible in almost every game. Well, at this point, every game I've worked on, which is a pretty broad range of games and genres. So I want to know that my predictions are precise. That, maybe that's just me, but I want to know that if I'm saying 80%, it is 80%. Now let's see what Josh Mank thinks about the ideal matchmaking. What is the ideal matchmaking for Josh Mank? So ideal matchmaking. Uh, the designer ideal is probably to put players in the games that are fun and maybe have some kind of like planned experience with varying intensity. It's kind of a classic design philosophy that don't just have all super tight matches and all really, or whatever, have some hard, some easy, and have it go up and down. Then you've got this like business ideal, right? Like the holy grail would, hey, can I put a long-term monetary value on every possible match I'm going to make per player and then match make into matches that maximize that value over time? And I don't think anyone knows how to do that yet, but that'd be amazing. And uh, also to keep the most amount of players in, our, in your game having fun. Some realistic proxies we use are things like skill gap and churn analysis and stuff like that. The idea being like, we don't necessarily know what fun is or what it's going to be for this match, but we kind of know what it isn't. So this is how the same player that feed in your game 
two games later can carry very, very, very easily. The matchmaking is designed this way. Easier matches, hard matches, easier matches, hard matches, tight matches. You can't win every single time in League of Legends. The game is designed to make you lose quite a few times. So the way to climb in this game is by performing better on your winning games and not doing terribly when you're losing a game. And you, you will lose by design. And what about losing streaks? Because this is something I hear a lot about. Uh, almost any time I join a company and we talk about matchmaking, someone brings up, we got to break losing streaks. But you know, it turns out we did not see players tend to leave early uh, because of a losing streak. If you want the matchmaking to love you, you need to love more the game. You need to improve at the game. You need to have more knowledge. You need to show better stats for the system. So... You won't climb because you're winning more games. No. You're going to win more games when the skill system realizes that you need to climb. You see the difference? Forget about winning games. No, you need to perform better. And it doesn't matter if it's when you're winning or when you're losing. And also, if you have a ranking system and you have a team-based game, being able to look at personal performance is nice because you can give recognition to players that lo maybe lost, but did really well uh, on, their t on their teams. So what's the data you use? It's going to be whatever st that statistic you, ha you have in question um, per player, per match. It's also about understanding the identity of our champion, all right, and playing around it. Right? You need to show better data for the algorithm. You need to show better stats. All right? Another fun thing you can do with counts is you can handle classes. So instead of just predicting kills, you can predict rogue kills or tank kills or healer healing. And you can use the same skill that way. And then so it will judge the player's skill based on whichever one of the, whatever class he is correctly. And it'll predict those well. So you, now his skill is going to reflect how good he is at doing what he chose to do at that moment. So there you have it. It's not about luck. It's about data. If you want to climb in this game, you need more knowledge. And please, you've been striving to climb in this game for so long. And now that a random dude created a YouTube channel to help you climb, you want to subscribe to his channel? Please click in the subscribe button and on the like button. And if you have any questions, put in the comments below. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I see you next video. Bye. Somewhere in this video, there is a code, a five digits code somewhere. It's actually very easy to find. Uh, the first five people that comment this code gonna earn $20 of RP in League of Legends. I know, I know it's little, but I'm poor. But this will increase over time. So type just the code. Don't type nothing else, otherwise everybody gonna gonna figure out all right all right see you next video every single video gonna have something like that